Hello and welcome to the 37th video in this series programming Chess SSNG JavaScript. Last video then we completed this make move function and in this video we're going to go all the way through the take move function. The first thing I'm going to do here is uncomment the take move here so don't forget to do that. And now we're going to, and again I'm going to do this in exactly the same way as I did the make move, I hope that's okay, just to keep things zipping along and not take four or five videos to do this take move function. And the good news is it's actually a little bit shorter than the make move function because it's simpler. So we're going to call this uh, take move and we don't actually need to send the move itself as an argument because we already have the move inside our gameboard.history array. So the first thing to do at the start of take move is decrease the hisply so that we can use this to index our history array because you remember say the first move was made on the board a pawn move then we restored all the information at the value of hisply 0 we then incremented somewhere in the middle of make move here hisply to 1 so when we come into take move hisply is 1 well, we need it to go back to 0 to be able to find our history information in the array and likewise say we were at ply 0 and we made the move we're now at ply 1 so we need to go back to ply 0 in our search tree play. And then what we can do is we can access the move itself from our history array like so. That should be fairly familiar using the his play. And then we can get our from and our two squares from the move in exactly the same way as we did inside the make move. We need then to do exactly as we did in the make move to fiddle around with the on passant square. So if the on passant square has been uh, was set in the previous make move, then we need to hash that back out of our hash key now. And we also need, with the castle permission, to do exactly as we did in the make move, take that out, because now we're going to reset the castle permission and the on passant squares from our history away, like so. So the cast permission gets set to what it was before the move was made, as does the 50 move rule, and as does the on passant square. And now what we can do, we can say that if the on passant square at the start of the after at the start of the move after taking it back, so effectively at the start of make move before we made the move, was set, then we can hash that back in now in this way. And the cast permission gets hashed back in. It may well, in most cases, have stayed the same, but in case it didn't, then we maintain the key integrity in this way, with the hash here and the hash here. OK, so the next thing to do is we can already change the side now for the game board, because we're changing it back to the side that did the move, and we can hash the side to keep the side key correct. And now we need to look at the case again of our special moves. So we need to put back on the board, and I'm going to paste a little bit more code here than I did in the make move because this should now be fairly familiar code. I'm just going to make some more space at the bottom to scroll things up here. We need to say that, again, if it was an on passant capture that we're taking back, we now need to add a pawn onto the board. And remember, if white is white made the capture, then we now need to add the piece at the 2 square minus 10, whereas before we cleared a piece at the 2 square minus 10, and we'll be adding a black pawn in the case of a white capture, a white on passant capture being taken back. And the inverse for black, if black had made an on passant capture, which we're now taking back, then at the 2 plus 10, we add a white pawn back onto the board. Otherwise, we might have had our castling move situation again, which means that we need to take a look at the two square again, which will tell us whether we need to move a rook back. And this works in exactly the same way as it did, but it's just the reverse of the make move function. So there's nothing new here at all, which is why I'm going through it fairly quickly. But again, depending on what the two square is to find the individual castling move, we then move the appropriate rook back. Assumption here, of course, of course, that there is a rook on the square that we're moving. And again, if you were doing some proper software, you would have some debug code in here just to assert that there is a rook on d1 or d8 or whatever. OK, so that's the special moves dealt with. That's all of our settings set back up on our board for the permissions and things like that. Now we just need to move the piece. And again, the ordering 
the order we do things here is critical. In make move, we took off the captured piece and then moved our piece. We have to do the reverse here. We have to move our piece away and then replace the capture piece. Otherwise, obviously, we'd put the capture piece on top of our piece on the two square and then move that capture piece effectively back to the from. So we need to move our piece from the two to the from first. And now we can ask the question, do we have a captured piece in our move? And if we do, then add this piece to the two square on the board. And last but not least, again, after we've done the moving the piece back, we can look at whether we had a promotion. And if we did, then depending on the side to move, we simply add the appropriate promoted piece to the board. So say a, a, pawn promote, a white pawn promoted to a8 from a7, then it would have moved back now and it would be sitting on the from square, which is a7. So we clear that pawn from a7 and then we add, oh no, sorry, it wouldn't have been a pawn, it would have been a queen or a knight or a rook or a bishop that was promoted, sorry, would now be sitting on a7. So we clear that off a7 and then we add on a, on the from square, we add the pawn depending on what the, I, I've used here the piece color of the promoted piece to say, okay, I could also use side here as well to say, which piece do we need to add? But if it was a white piece, then we add a white pawn. Otherwise, we use a black pawn. I assume you're familiar with the conditional operator. It's just a bit shorter than an if-else statement here. And that's actually all we need to do for the take move. Um, it's not. It's a little bit shorter and a little bit simpler than the make move, principally because we store we take some of the information back out of the. Um, we take some information back out of the uh, history information in the array here. And it's just dawning me on one thing actually that I said was maybe incorrect with the make move. I said that we were storing the position key here to be able to restore that in the take move. Of course we haven't because we're incrementally updating the position key during the uh, take move function and make move and also in the clearing piece and adding pieces and things like that. The reason we store the position key in the history is when we're checking during the running of the game for a threefold repetition. So if we have the same key appearing three times, then we know we have a threefold repetition. Okay, so now the take move has been written in, then we can go to main.js and you'll see that I've already added in, I've taken off the printing of the piecing list here. I've generate the moves, check the board, make the first move, print the board, check the board, and now take that move, print the board and check the board. So I'm just going to fire up the browser and refresh now, and there are no errors, that's probably the first time that's happened in the entire series. And now bring over the browser and just scroll up a little bit. So you can see that we've got our game board here with the side to move white, and this is the hash key here. And now we make the move A2E3, the hash key's changed, the side to move is black. And now we've taken that move back, and you see that the hash key has gone back to the original key here, despite the incremental update, so that's working, the side to move again is white, and the board is restored to the start position. So it looks like our make and take move are working okay. So the next stage to go to now is actually to do something called perf testing. And I'm just going to off screen from the video here, open up a file very quickly. I want to show you before I leave this video and hopefully I can find the file I'm looking for. I think it's in downloads. Okay, so bring across a file here. I think I might have already showed this once in, in the series. What we have here is something called a perfed test file. So what we're going to be writing in the next few videos is a function which a, a, a function which takes in these positions or we can give in these positions and searches the entire tree and counts the number of what are called leaf nodes, which is at the bottom of the tree. So the furthest leaves from the root in the tree counts the number of leaves it reaches. So for example, this position here at a depth of four would have four million, just over four million nodes, a depth of five, 193 million nodes. And there are around 130 positions or so in this entire file of all sorts of different types. And the idea is, is that you run through these positions and let them run usually to, I would say, at least depth five. Some of them, as you can see, have the depth six nodes as well, when it's not too many. And you should, and you have to, on each of the positions, get exactly the correct number of nodes. And you can be, I would say, 99.9% .9 sure that if you can go through all of these positions to depth five 
and get the correct number of leaf nodes, then your move generator, make move and undo move are relatively bug free. So that's what we'll be starting to write in the next few videos. So that's it for now then. Thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.